Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Bayonets of the World. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be looking at the LaBelle 1886 uh, or Rosalie Bayonet. Now this thing is so incredibly long that I can't even fit it in the frame. Um, here's the tip of it. Here's the handle. It's kind of, uh, kind of funny on a GoPro that's a wide angle, I can't fit the whole thing in there. So, we'll get to that in a second. Kind of over the history of this, um, back in the late 19th century, People thought that, you know, bayonets were going to be widely used just like they had been in previous conflicts like, you know, the Franco-Prussian War and American Civil War and previous conflicts before that. So they had smokeless powder rifles and they are bolt-action rifles, repeating rifles, but they still wanted the huge bayonets that had a lot of length on them to give them the edge uh, as far as reach during a close quarters fight. So the French came out with this thing, which is a nasty, one of the most disgusting bayonets I think ever made. Um, a lot of mixed reviews on it from the actual people that used it. And it's just insane. So we'll get to it right now. I'll pull this out. It's got a steel scabbard. It's just a round scabbard, and it's got a little ball at the bottom. You pull this thing out, and this one's got a lot of grease on it, which is kind of good because it's uh, in great shape. And look at that. It just keeps going. So... It's a cruciform bayonet, which means that it's got four little edges that form a cross on the end of this, as you can kind of see. And it's really not that thick. I think it's... One of the problems they had was that it would break off right about here when you stab somebody and kind of bent it because the metal is so thick. Now, this is designed to go through layers upon layers of wool clothing, and I'm pretty sure it would be effective at doing so. Okay, so the early ones had this, what some collectors call a quillion, I just call it a hook. Um, it's a decorative thing, I don't really know if it served any practical purpose, so um, can't really find a definitive answer on that. But anyways, the earlier ones had that, and I'll show you what the later models looked like in a little bit. So then there's a the locking ring that uh, slides over the muzzle, and your release is actually right here. Now what that does is um, this little... The lug actually is really tiny on the LaBelle rifle and the Bertier rifle. So when you push this down, all it does is rotate that little detent over and allows you to take the bayonet off. It's really simple, uh, very, very crude, but effective. Uh, the handles, this is made out of steel, it appears, because it's kind of a whitish metal. And then this part right there would, would actually sit in the little housing thing on the end of the rifle. So you've only got one little lug on there, and it actually was a pretty sturdy bayonet. So these things are <laughs> pretty cool, but they're disgusting. Really quickly, I'm going to measure this bayonet. I'll measure the, I don't know if I can get the whole thing in the frame, so, uh, getting grease all over the blanket. Alright, so the blade itself comes in at 20 and a half inches. That's insane, that's nuts, alright, because the LaBelle 1886-93 rifle is insanely long already. With this thing on, it stands a little bit, about as tall as me, and I'm six foot four. So, the overall length is about 25 and a quarter inches, you're going to have to take my word for it because I can't slide this thing up anymore. But it's at 25 and a quarter inches for overall length, even though the handle's rather short. And a lot of the guys apparently would make fighting knives out of these, the ones that broke and stuff. And can you imagine having something that was cut off about right here, put another pointy tip on it, and it'd be a really nice fighting knife because uh, these are really lightweight. They're not heavy at all, even with the amazing length on it. Um, I'm going to show you really quick the later models. They just... There was two variants. They had the steel handle and the brass handle, which is what this one is. Now, this one doesn't have the coolian on it. The old ones have the serial number on the coolian, and this one has it on the little nub below the release right here. Same release, same concept, same everything, just made out of brass. Um, this blade is disgustingly long as well. They're all the same. Um, this one's a little bit more clean. It doesn't have as much grease on it, so you can kind of see what they look like. Yeah, it's just an insane bayonet. Like... I would not want to get hit with one of these, it would just hurt. I mean, it just pokes a giant hole in you, and you're really kind of stuck there to just suffer and bleed out if you don't get medical attention right away. So, yeah, that's the uh, 1886-93 LaBelle bayonet, the Rosalie bayonet, the Ippie bayonet, whatever they want to call it. Um, it's nasty. It's pretty much what I think of when I think of World War One. It's just long, designed to kill, looks ominous, and just disgusting. So... France, you definitely know how to make things look really, uh, really awful, like awful, like scary awful. So, all right, well, we'll kind of wrap this up and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, that'd be fantastic. 
Also, if you could uh, check out my Patreon, the link to that is in the description, and consider supporting me on there for even a dollar a month. I can hunt stuff like this down and find the cool stuff, buy it, and make videos on it, and actually field test it. We did field test uh, one of these, and it performed pretty terribly. It got stuck in the log and whatever, so, yep. Patreon helps with that a lot, and, um, but anyway, if you don't want to do that, that's perfectly fine too, and I just appreciate you watching. For all my viewers, past and present, you guys rock, you're awesome, thank you so much, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you next time.